Okay, so in this task, we need to enable SNMP on the routers. Here's router one. I'll go into global configuration mode and use the command SNMP server community to enable SNMP. We've been told to use public and private as the community strings. In the real world, you wouldn't want to do that. In the real world, you want to use something a lot more secure than public and private. But because this is a lab and we simply want to get used to using SNMP, I'll configure SNMP with those two community strings. So show run shows us those two SNMP community strings as configured on router one. On router two, we'll do something very similar. So on router two, SNMP server community public read only SNMP server community private is going to be read write. So we've got our two community strings configured on both routers. That's essentially all we need to do on the routers. And now on the PC, we should be able to use the MIB browser to interrogate the routers. So on the PC under desktop, MIB browser, I'll put in the IP address of the first router. The IP addresses have been configured on these devices. So show IP interface brief on router one, shows us the IP address of router one. So 10111. I'm gonna click on advanced. Read community is gonna be public. Write community is gonna be private. We've been told to use SNMP version three per these instructions. So I'm gonna click OK, and then hopefully I should be able to browse through the MIB tree until I find system sysname. So we've been told to get the host name of router one and router two as the first task. We're gonna be using an SNMP get to do that. Click go should allow us to get the host name of the router. And as you can see here, the router name is R1. If I do something similar with router two, click go and notice the router name is router two. So it was as simple as that to get the host name of the routers. Now we need to view the interfaces on router one. So under interfaces, and I need to do that on router one, you could do something similar on router two if you wanted to. Let's have a look at the interface index. There are interface numbers, description. Notice there are the interfaces on the router. We can confirm that by using show IP interface brief on the router again. So show IP interface brief, we've got gigabit 000102, loopback and VLAN one, and there you go. It's as simple as that to interrogate a router using SNMP and to get back information about the router. So what are the interface types? So I have type, click go, we can see copper, gigabit ethernet, loopback and VLAN as the interface types. You could also look at other information such as the maximum transmission unit, the speed of the interfaces, physical addresses, so the MAC addresses. So on the router show interface gigabit zero zero, Notice the MAC address of gigabit zero zero, which is this interface over here. So SNMP allows a management station to get a lot of information about a device, such as the status of interfaces. So that's administrative statuses. Here's operational statuses. 
because we shut interfaces down, they're showing as both administratively down and operationally down. Once again, the only interfaces enabled on the router are gigabit zero zero and the loopback interfaces. Other interfaces are administratively down and we can see that through this interface. So let's have a look at the routing table of router one. So IP, IP routing table. Let's look at the route destination. There are the routes in the routing table. We can confirm that again by looking at router one's CLI. So show IP, so show IP route. There's network quadruple one. We can see that here. Quadruple two shown here. 10110, 10111. We can see that here and we can see a default route which is pointing to router two. We can see default route information in the routing table through SNMP. So again, it was as simple as that to get routing information via SNMP. Okay, so the next thing we need to get is the OSPF area on router one, as well as the OSPF router ID and OSPF neighbors. So back in the MIB browser, go to OSPF. We can get the OSPF router ID, there it is. We can get, as an example, the version of OSPF used, which is version two. We can get the administrative status of OSPF. Back on the router, show IP OSPF. We can see that OSPF is enabled. Here's the router ID. This is using OSPF version two because it's OSPF for IP version four. We can also get the OSPF area ID. Notice it's area zero. Again, on the router, Notice the backbone area, area zero has been enabled. In OSPF, you can represent it this way or you can represent it this way. In this example, authentication hasn't been enabled in OSPF. We could also look at the link state database, see things such as the router IDs in the link state database. Notice we see those two. So show IP OSPF database. They are LSA type one, OSPF entries, and here's LSA type two. And we can see that through SNMP. What about the neighbor table? So neighbor IP address on router one is router two. On the router show IP OSPF neighbor, we can see that router two is a neighbor if we change this to router two, we can see that router one is a neighbor to router two. And we can see the router ID of router one. We're querying router two at this point. It has a router ID neighbor of 1111. So on router two, show IP OSPF neighbor. Notice there's the neighbor router ID and the IP address of the neighbor as seen on router two. Again, there's the IP address as shown here through SNMP. Router ID is this, as we can see here on router two. We can look at the OSPF priority. So notice the neighbor has a priority of 100. On router two, we can see that router one has that priority configured. And on router one, show run shows us that the priority was configured on the gigabit 00 interface. So a lot of information can be gleaned through SNMP. I've completed all the read-only tasks. 
let's change the name of R1 to router 1. So here's router 1. Notice the router name is R1. What we want to do now, however, is change the system name. At the moment, it's R1, but we want to change that by using a set. And in this case, it's an octet string. So let's change the name to R1. Click Go. We told that the router name is changed. On the router, we can confirm that the router name has changed. So if I go back to Get, there's the router name. I could change it back to R1. Click OK, click Go. Router name has changed. We can confirm that again through the console of the router. So I'll change that back to Get, and then to Set, and set it back to router 1 per our instructions. And notice on the router, we see that the name is router 1. So I'm happy with that. I've completed these tasks and shown you a bit more. How did you get on? Were you able to complete these tasks? Now, as an extra, I'm going to set Packet Tracer to simulation mode. And then I'm going to use get to get the router name from router one and click go. So notice an SNMP packet is sent to the router. SNMP port is port 161. This is a UDP packet. Source IP address is 10.1.1.200, which is the PC. Destination is the router. We can see the outbound PDU here. So we can see lots of information, such as the source MAC address, destination MAC address, we can see source IP, the PC destination is the router, but the important information is here. SNMP uses UDP port 161 as both the source and destination port number. I'll click capture forward, packet goes to the switch and then onto the router. So let's have a look at the packet. Inbound PDU looks like this. We're not seeing a lot of SNMP information. In Packet Tracer, we can see that the version of SNMP is version three. We can see that the community is set to public. On the packet that goes back to the PC, notice the source is the router, destination is the PC. We can see version three, community is public. Let's capture forward to that. Hits the PC. And on the PC, we've received that SNMP packet. We're not seeing a lot of detail through Packet Tracer here. It's not showing us the actual information that's returned, such as the router host name. But if you were using a proper Wireshark capture, you'd be able to see more information. But what I want to point out is notice the source and destination port number is 161. Protocol used is UDP. What I like about Packet Tracer here is it's shown us clearly how SNMP works. It's very simple to configure SNMP and then browse the MIBs on the devices using SNMP and retrieve information as well as configure the devices through SNMP.